So Nick Webb has accused his former amateur rival Joe Joyce of bottling it when he was offered to fight him on this weekend's uh, card, Dylan White versus Joseph Parker. Uh, Joe Joyce officially turned the fight down because he has split with his trainer Ishmael Salas. And so he doesn't want to go into any kind of serious fight without a proper trainer. And I can respect that. I don't see that as a duck. I see that as someone being sensible and prudent. And you don't know the circumstances as well in terms of uh, exactly how the split with Salas came about, whether it was amicable or whether it was, you know, not amicable. I know publicly they've said that it was an amicable split. But fighters and trainers often say stuff like that. They often say it was amicable and then years later you find out there was a huge rift. <laughs> it reminds me of um, John David Jackson. Because f for years there were rumours that there was an issue between Jackson and Kovalev. But both Kovalev and Jackson denied it. Up until Kovalev lost to uh, Andre Ward in the rematch. And then all of a sudden it came out that there was an actual, there was a rift, that the rumours were true all along. So, you never know. But, whatever the case may be, I'm going to quote Nick Webb here. He says, Joe has been very vocal in calling out the likes of Jarrell Miller and Bryant Jennings, but he bottled it when he was offered the fight with me. If you want to be mentioned with the top heavyweights in a division, then you can't be turning down fights against little old me. He said that he'll fight any heavyweight in the world, let alone Nick Webb. But that clearly isn't true. Yes, he is in the process of changing trainers, but if he is as good as he tells everyone he is, then he should be able to get past me without one in the corner. Joe beat me in the amateurs and I'd love the opportunity to get my payback. All of my focus, oh, sorry, all of my focus is on Dave Island this Saturday. They missed out the years there. But when I get through him, hopefully me and Joe can get it on in September on the Joshua vs. Povetkin undercard at Wembley. That will be amazing. I've come a long way since my amateur days and I'd prove that by becoming the first man to beat Joe in his pro career and taking his Commonwealth belt home with me before marching on to the British title. So those are the words of Nick Webb. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, I did actually see the Joe Joyce Nick Webb amateur fight. It was a very entertaining amateur fight. It was pretty much a slugfest. But the big difference that I saw in that fight was Joe Joyce just appeared to be in far better physical condition than Nick Webb. Joe Joyce looked like an athlete, whereas Nick Webb looked like a guy who likes to fight but is not in athletic condition. So that to me appeared to be the biggest difference. Um, Joe Joyce just looked like a proper high level amateur who's just constantly in tremendous condition. Nick Webb today still isn't a body beautiful. He still doesn't look in amazing shape. He still isn't as trim as Joe Joyce. But has he closed the gap enough since their amateur days in terms of his fitness, in terms of his technique, etc., to change the result to a win for him this time and also you have to bear in mind that the amateur fight was over three rounds whereas this fight would be over 10 or 12 rounds so who would that benefit you would imagine that would have to benefit joe joyce more right i mean that's what you would assume because of the fact that as i say joe joyce seems like more of an athlete and he does have a tremendous engine this is what they always say about him right that he's got this tremendous engine and I've seen no evidence to suggest that he doesn't have a tremendous engine. Does Nick Webb have a tremendous engine? I don't know, maybe he does, but we'll have to find out if and when they fight. And Joe Joyce did say that he's willing to fight Nick Webb in September. Let's hope that happens. And it would be a good addition. In fact, it would be a great addition to the Joshua Povetkin undercard to have Joe Joyce fight Nick Webb. And... I don't know where Haymaker are going at the moment. I wish them all the success. I was really hoping that they would retain a lot of the fighters that they initially signed. So there could be many cards on Channel 5 and Dave. 
But at the moment, it's like Joe Joyce is the only guy they've got left. <laughs> That's what it seems like at the moment, which is a shame. And so because of that, they're having to put Joe Joyce on matchroom cards at the moment. You know, and there's no problem with that, obviously. That's cool. But you would prefer in an ideal world if you're Joe Joyce and if you're Haymaker, you'd prefer to put him on Haymaker shows. You know, I'm sure that was the plan. But because David Hay lost to Tony Bellew, I think that really hit Haymaker hard. If Hay had won the fight and won in convincing fashion, that would have helped the Haymaker brand as a promotional outfit. But it wasn't to be. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this potential matchup. Do you think Joe Joyce ducked him? Do you think Joe Joyce did bottle it? Or do you think he w he did the right thing and the sensible thing by postponing the fight for now until he finds a permanent trainer. And by the way, there was an interview that I saw with Malik Scott. I think it was, was it Boxing Social or was it IFL? It's one of the two who did the interview with Malik Scott in this past week. And Malik Scott actually said that Joe Joyce is currently training with Abel Sanchez in Big Bear. Now, I don't know whether Sanchez will end up being Joyce's permanent trainer because Sanchez is based in Big Bear. All Sanchez's fighters go to him. I've never heard in recent years anyway. Back in the days, it was different. But in recent years, I've never heard of Abel Sanchez going somewhere to train a fighter. It's normally fighters going to him, to his Big Bear gym to train there because they like the altitude and stuff like that and they like his setup. So, and you know, Joe Joyce is not a big money fighter at this stage. So it would probably take a hell of a lot of money for Abel Sanchez to come out of Big Bear and go anywhere else to train someone. Joe Joyce is not generating that kind of money. So would Joe Joyce base himself in California? Potentially he could because Richard Schaefer is David Hayes business partner. You know, they have this a company called Haymaker Ringstar. So Ringstar is the American branch of that business. Perhaps Ringstar could, you know, get Joe Joyce and some American fight cards. Maybe that's a possibility. Uh, we'll see. But it is going to be interesting to see who Joe Joyce manages to secure as a trainer. And, and, and again, going back to Joe Joyce basing himself in America, that to me would be the best thing to do um, if he plans on having an American trainer. And I'm not saying Amer an American trainer is necessarily the best thing, but I'm saying if he decides that he wants an American tra American trainer uh, and it has to be Abel Sanchez who won't travel, then it's best for him to base himself there and fight there. I don't think it's a good idea to be training in America and then fly into the UK every time he wants to fight because then you're going to get jet lag and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, some people deal with jet lag very easily, but a lot of other people don't. And a lot of other people, it will actually take weeks for them to adjust to jet lag. And it's not just the times that you feel sleepy. That's not what you have to think about when it comes to jet lag. It's the times when your body produces energy. Okay. If you are someone who, like, for example, a lot of fighters, when they know they're going to be fighting, at 11 p.m. During their training camps, they have training sessions late at night at 11 p.m. to get their body conditioned to producing energy at that particular time. Now, when you are training in a completely different time zone, you know, Big Bear, California must be what? <sighs> Is it a seven to nine hour time difference from the UK? It's a massive time difference. So when you're training on big bear time and then you fly back to the uk yeah you can adjust your sleep within a few days or a week or so uh, back to uk time but your body is not going to be producing the energy at the correct times i mean obviously you could try and adjust the situation in big bear and train in unusual hours in big bear but again that could mess your body clock up in other ways so i think it's just easier 
on your body and better for your body if you know if you're going to base your training camp in America, it's best that you actually fight there. I know you've got people like Joseph Parker who based his, bases himself in Las Vegas when it comes to training, or well, he has done many times anyway. He's been basing himself in Vegas and then it would, he would fly back to New Zealand to fight. But Joseph Parker said several times that that process actually hindered him. You know, he admitted that he was not getting the best out of himself because of the fact that he was training in Vegas, but then fighting in New Zealand and there is a time difference there. So anyway, let me know what you think of everything I've talked about in this video with regards to Joe Joyce's new trainer, who it's going to be, whether you think Abel Sanchez is a good fit. Uh, Sanchez, he's been around for a very long time. He's trained a lot of fighters over the years, a lot of world champions. His two most famous fighters that he's trained are Terry Norris and Gennady Golovkin. But also in more recent times, he trained or still does train Morat Gassiev. Most of Abel Sanchez fighters are offensive minded. You know, Terry Norris was kind of a boxer puncher. I heard Abel Sanchez once say that Terry Norris was a, a, an African-American who he taught the Mexican style to. But Terry Norris didn't really have a Mexican style to me anyway. Terry Norris was a boxer puncher. Um, he had a reckless defense, I would say. <laughs> maybe that's what he means by Mexican style. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't take it as a compliment, even though Abel's Mexican himself. But yeah, Norris never had the greatest defense. And he never had the greatest chin either. He, he he was a little chinny, Terry Norris. But he was a great combination puncher. He had great power. Or at least very good power. Maybe not great, but very good power. Great combination puncher. You know, nice movement, athletically gifted, nice balance. It was his defense and his chin that let Terry Norris down uh, several times in his career. Uh, but uh, he was very offensive anyway, that's what I'll tell you. He was definitely an offensive fighter, normally anyway. Uh, he didn't normally box safe. And obviously the same with Golovkin. He's an offensive fighter, he doesn't normally box safe. Joe Joyce likes to fight like that as well. He likes to come forward and sling punches and get stuck in. So maybe Abel Sanchez could teach him a thing or two. Maybe Joe Joyce is just out there seeing what works, you know, seeing if Abel Sanchez is the right fit. Um, is he being too ambitious by going out there and trying to hook up with somebody like Abel Sanchez? Does he even need to go out there and, you know, find an Abel Sanchez. Because he's worked with Ishmael Salas and perhaps he's thinking, I need someone on that kind of level. I need someone with that kind of experience. Uh, is that wise for Joe Joyce? Or is he maybe, uh, you know, seeking something that he doesn't necessarily need? Are there trainers in the UK that could do just as good a job, if not be a better job than an Abel Sanchez? You know, is he suffering himself unnecessarily here by trying to secure a big name trainer let me know what you think in the comment section people it's happening i'm out